To help us think about probabilities in photochemistry, we often use this idea of quantum yield. And quantum yield is defined as the relative probability of observing a process starting from an excited state given all other possible processes. There are other definitions of quantum yield that we'll explore here shortly, um, but this is one that will give us a good intuition for what's going on. So to understand quantum yield, let's talk about a hypothetical process. Let's say we started with a molecule R in its ground state, and R absorbed a photon, H nu, to form an excited state, R star. And let's say this happened in a solution where another molecule M that can react with the excited state R star is also present. So chemical reaction of R star and M, let's say it's an addition reaction that leads to a product RM, pretty straightforward. Chemical reaction can take place. However, the excited state R star has available to it a wide variety of unique molecular processes as well. All those processes that we saw on the state energy diagram fluorescence, emission of a photon from the excited singlet state, let's say this is a singlet state which we'll represent with a superscript one for the time being, emission of a photon to go back down to the ground state. Once our star is in the ground state, right, chemical reaction is impossible, so this is a one-way arrow in a different direction. Internal conversion to another singlet state, if we excited to, let's say, S2, S3, internal conversion back down to S1 or even S0 is an option, or S1 to S0 internal conversion is an option. Intersystem crossing from S to T, from a singlet to a triplet, is an option. All three of these are available to the excited state in contrast to chemical reaction, right? And each is associated with a certain probability. That probability is the quantum yield. So let's say that these are the only four possible things that can happen under the conditions that we set up for the generation of R star in this solution. Each one has a quantum yield, which we represent with a capital phi, or phi. So we have phi m, for example, could be the quantum yield of, of chemical reaction. And let's just throw a number down here, right? So, you know, something here, 0.35, maybe is the, the quantum yield of chemical reaction. Let's continue for the other processes. So we have a quantum yield of fluorescence, and let's call that psi f, phi f, excuse me, and let's throw down a number there, let's say 0 0.050. We have a quantum yield for internal conversion from, let's say, the S1 to the S0 state, and let's call that 0 0.1, and we have a quantum yield for intersystem crossing, and Based on the rules of probability, if these are the only four things that can happen, 0.35 plus 0.1 plus 0.5, that's 0.95. So the quantum yield of intersystem crossing then, ISC, must be 0.05. So that all four of these quantum yields, right, and this is an important point, the sum of all of the quantum yields proceeding from a given excited state for all the possible processes that can take place, let's say n is the full set of processes, has to equal 1. This is just the rules of probability coming into play, right? Now, what does each of these numbers mean? Well, essentially, the quantum yield means for every one molecule of R star generated or for every one photon absorbed, this is another definition you'll see, 0.35 of those go on to productive reaction to form Rn. For every one photon absorbed, 0.1 of those goes toward internal conversion of S1 to S0. For every one photon, 0.5 of those goes toward fluorescence, the emission of a photon from S1 to get R back to S0. And 0.05, again, for every one photon absorbed, 0.05 of those goes toward intersystem crossing to the lowest triplet state. So it's a probability. Right? Essentially, given that I have formed R star, the excited state, what is the probability of fluorescence? 0.5, and so on and so forth. Quantum yield is also related to rate in a practical sense, right? It's because to generate R star, I have to absorb a photon. So if I have some rate of photons impinging on my reaction, some rate of absorption, let's say, then 
the rate of a particular process, say the chemical reaction, is limited by this number, right? This number times the rate of absorption of photons by R gives me the rate of the chemical reaction essentially occurring. The other thing that's worth mentioning about quantum yield at this point is that it's it's multiplicative because again it's a probability and so if events following what R star does you know one of these four processes are independent of what's taken place previously which is generally a good assumption we can multiply the probabilities to get an overall sense of the probability of a composite or multi-step process so if we look for example at inter-system crossing Intersystem crossing to the triplet state, let's call it T1, um, can lead to either phosphorescence, and this is the emission of a photon from T1 to form S0, or a, a reverse ISC, intersystem crossing process, to get back to S0, to get back to the ground state. And each of these has a quantum yield. If these are the only possible processes, let's say ISC is, oh, I don't know, 0.75 quantum yield, and phosphorescence is 0.25. If we wanted to know the overall phosphorescence quantum yield, starting from R star, starting from the excited state, how would we calculate that? Well, let's call the overall quantum yield of phosphorescence associated with R star, right, associated with this excited state generated after absorbing the photon, let's call that phi pH. That is the composite probability of two things happening. First of all, R star undergoes intersystem crossing to the T1 state, which is the first step, essentially, of the phosphorescence mechanism. We know the probability of that taking place, that's 0.05. And the probability of that undergoing phosphorescence is associated with this 0.25 value, which we could call a quantum yield, but is actually often called an efficiency. The efficiency of phosphorescence with respect to the T1 state is 0.25. And we're going to multiply the 0.05 probability of intersystem crossing in the first place by the 0.25 probability of the T1 state undergoing phosphorescence. So the overall quantum yield of phosphorescence is the product of the efficiencies of each of the individual steps or the quantum yields of the individual steps. In this sense, quantum yield is multiplicative. The probabilities of individual steps within a multi-step process are multiplied to get the overall quantum yield for the entire composite process. So highly useful concept for rates and probabilities, quantum yield, it's a little bit tricky to measure. When we talk about experimental methods in photochemistry, we'll dig into approaches to measuring quantum yield in the future.